Just behind me is something fairly unique. This is an SCMP Mark 14 computer. These were built in kit form in the late 1970s by a company called Science of Cambridge. They went on to become Sinclair, the company that produced the ZX80, ZX81 home computers. Let's take a closer look. Now if you're around 14 or 15 today you probably have an Xbox or a PS3 in your house. This is what was in our house when I was around 14, 15 years old. This is what passed for a home computer before home computers really took off. As you can see this one has been housed in its own attractive case with a metal frontage. It has a heavy duty keypad, a hex display and over here we have a selector dial which allows you to choose between various modes of the processor and there's the on off switch. Around the back we have a tape interface and there you can see the mains cable going in. Unremarkable on the other sides. Let's open it up and have a look inside. Okay, now this thing hasn't been opened for some 30 years, so it's probably full of dead spiders and things. Let's take a look. Plenty of wiring. The computer proper is the board at the bottom here. And IC1 there is the CPU. That's the National Semiconductor SCMP processor. That would run at 4 megahertz. And alongside that there are some RAM chips. We have in this machine an expanded RAM. The original kit had only 256 bytes. That's bytes, not megabytes. 256 bytes of RAM. And here we can see the other bits that the constructor of the kit has added. The heavy duty keypad and the uh, inside of the selector switch there. And here we have the interface to the display. So here's a circuit diagram for this kit and you can see from this design that the original intention was to have the keypad mounted on the end of the circuit board like so. But in this developed kit we have the additional interface to the keypad on the top of the machine. And here's IC1 the processor. Over here we have the RAM chips and down here some additional ROM and RAM. So here then is a computer that was selling in small numbers in the UK for about £40 in its basic kit form at the time that people were buying the Apple II computer for around £1,000. So this is a fairly unique part of British computing history. Well, does it work, I'm sure you want to know. Well, let's find out. The display is illuminated. However, it does not appear to go beyond that. Now in theory what should happen is I should be able to enter a memory address on the keypad and go to that address but no joy. Sadly it's not working anymore. Anyway here we have a collection of literature relating to the machine. There's the original manual with a guide to machine programming inside. Uh, an additional guide to SEMP programming. Here's a price list from the shop where this kit probably came from in Liverpool in the 70s. Um, circuit diagrams and here's an article from the now defunct personal computer world describing how to expand the machine. So here you can see the basic specification of the kit. The hex display. Um, 256 bytes of memory, as I said, that's a very small amount of memory. It was expandable to, expandable to around 600, and it ran at just 4 megahertz. And down here we have the prices for the basic kit, £39.95. And here in the same catalogue you can see the Apple II computer, 
and the prices for this were around a thousand pounds. Now it's clear from this that my dad, who I inherited this from, was uh, intending to sell this machine at some point. Here's an ad he composed to put in the paper, but luckily he didn't sell it, and here it is today for us to have a look at. <laughs> 